Hello everyone and welcome to the lecture titled Changing the Master Narrative and German Perceptions of Collective Responsibility. In this lecture we will discuss how the master narrative of German responsibility for World War II and the Holocaust changed from Konrad Adenauer's tenure from 49 to 63 to Willy Brandt in the late 1960s and 70s and finally to Helmut Schmidt in the 70s and 80s and how this impacted German perceptions of collective responsibility for the Holocaust and other war crimes. German perceptions of collective responsibility in the post-war period were comprised of an evolving dynamic of victim narratives, reluctant acceptance, full acknowledgement of complicity, and a desire to move on from the past, and shifted over time as a result of political narratives that shaped the collective memory of the German people. Jeffrey Olick and Daniel Levy suggest that collective memory is an evolving, politically influenced negotiation of the past. The politics of memory sees the construction of narratives by political agents and deals with the way that history is recorded and how it is presented to the public. Germany's Nazi past is an inescapable burden for politicians and has therefore been an obligatory topic to be navigated by Germany's leadership over the decades following World War II. The politics of memory is defined by political agendas and can have a profound impact on the perceptions and memory of the people. Therefore, the topic of German collective responsibility for World War II is one that has been politically influenced. Remember, collective responsibility is about the moral responsibilities of groups and their members for the good or, good or bad consequences of group behavior, the nature of these responsibilities and how they should be assigned. Do the German people as a whole bear collective responsibility for their role in the Holocaust and other war, war crimes committed during World War II? Or does this responsibility belong directly to the individual Nazis who committed those crimes? Lars Rensmann contends that guilt cannot be inherited or transferred, and that in the case of Nazi Germany, the crimes committed cannot be collectively attributed to future generations. Furthermore, Rensmann suggests that collective responsibility does not imply that all members of German society share equally in such feelings, and that their level of guilt depends on how well the individual identifies with the group. He suggests Germans emotionally process the legacy of crimes committed and defines national guilt as the objective political legacy of Nazi crimes. This concept of collective responsibility is polarized in Germany and has seen shifting narratives in German politics that attempt to shape public perceptions of the war. Geyer and Hansen suggest that German national identity is a source of pride, but that pride is tainted by the tremendous moral failure of Germans during the Nazi era and by the moral bankruptcy of German nationalist narratives that were linked to anti-Semitism and led to the Holocaust. I would contend that while Rensmann's assertions about collective guilt may be true of Germans born after the war, those who survived the war continued for decades with little or no consequences. Furthermore, I would contend that German political narratives seized upon victim narratives, reflected the unspecific nature of assigning collective guilt, and fostered desires to move on from a troubled past. The immediate post-war era saw the U.S. Office of Military Government, United States, in Germany, under the command of General Lucius Clay, conducting surveys of Germans' views of the recent past. These can serve as a baseline for how Germans viewed collective responsibility immediately following the war. According to the survey results, a substantial majority admitted that the German population as a whole should bear some blame or guilt for Nazi crimes. However, 83% of Germans surveyed believed Germany's crimes were only on the same level as other nations. So right away there was a problematic dichotomy in German perceptions of the war. Lily Gardner Feldman, a scholar and fellow at the American Institute for Contemporary German Studies, suggests Germans were deeply divided on the interpretation of the responsibility for crimes committed. While there was evidence for guilt, there was also evidence for continued anti-Semitism and denials of responsibility. During this time, Germans also had fresh memories of their own victimization, including Allied bombings, the evacuation of 15 million ethnic Germans from Eastern Europe, and the brutal treatment from the Red Army as it approached from the East, including murder and rape. Were their claims of victimization legitimate, especially considering the evidence for the complicity of ordinary Germans in Nazi crimes? Let's briefly consider the evidence for collective responsibility of the German and Austrian people. The November 1938 anti-Jewish events known as Kristallnacht caused the destruction of synagogues and the vandalization and looting of Jewish businesses and homes. Ordinary Germans were witnesses and in many cases were co-perpetrators. The ensuing Aryanization directly benefited German citizens as they took Jewish businesses and property for their own. 
many Germans openly embraced the war and the mistreatment of Jews. Austrians welcomed the Anschluss and unification with Nazi Germany. At least some percentage of ordinary Germans would have lived in close proximity to concentration camps. Women would have been in contact with their soldier family members, knowing at least some of what was happening, as, and they contributed to the labor force during the war as well. Ordinary Germans knew what was happening, or at least had a good idea of what was happening. The apologetic discourses of not knowing or having no power to do anything about it could not stand in the light of the evidence of their overwhelming complicity. So, in the Adenauer era, the narrative on responsibility was vague. His statement, unspeakable crimes have been committed in the name of the German people, calling for moral and material indemnity, was seemingly a clear statement of German responsibility. But the language is actually nonspecific. Crimes were committed in the name of the German people? Then who committed those crimes? Was it the Germans? Despite efforts to pay reparations to Israel, which was heavily influenced by the U.S., the dominant narrative had not really changed to the point where Germans were accepting of collective responsibility. Remember, Adenauer was speaking in the immediate post-war period to a German society who had largely lived through World War II and who were tacitly involved in the crimes committed. His unspecific comments largely reflect the problematic dichotomy mentioned earlier in which Germans felt that collective guilt was warranted, but compared their crimes to other countries while also pushing their own victim narratives. So how did the political narrative change in the 60s and 70s? If Germany was beginning to come to terms with its past, then how was the victim narrative changing? Finally, did the shift in uh, public perception, was that a permanent change or did the narrative change again? A significant factor in changing the narrative was Willy Brandt, who was the leader of the Social Democratic Party in Germany and the Chancellor from 1969 to 74. He resisted the Nazi regime and ideology from the beginning and fled to Norway during World War II. As a Chancellor, he knelt and laid a wreath at the Memorial of the Jewish Ghetto in Warsaw in 1970, and he signed the Treaty of Warsaw, which committed Germany and Poland to nonviolence and kept the existing border imposed by the Allies at the Potsdam Conference. Up to this point, German leaders had avoided the concept of collective guilt and emphasized that Germans were atoning for the crimes committed by the Third Reich, not by Germany or average Germans. Brandt, however, was the first German head of state to draw a line saying no German is free of history. Here was a leader who had no part in Nazi crimes and in fact resisted, who made bold gestures to show collective German responsibility. During the 60s, the victim narratives had gone into remission with such a public spotlight on the crimes of the Holocaust. For example, like in the public trials of Frankfurt Auschwitz or the Adolf Eichmann trial. And later, Brandt's willingness to accurately acknowledge the past also caused these victim narratives to go into remission. However, the politics of memory was constantly changing and victim narratives would return in later decades. In the 70s and 80s, Helmut Schmidt regressed to the political narrative that Germany ought to be able to move on from the past and should no longer be held hostage to Auschwitz. For Schmidt, the burdens of the past reached inappropriately into the present. Considering Brandt's seeming acknowledgement of German complicity years earlier, Schmidt's narrative seemed to acknowledge that Germany had endured the blame too long, and that a concept like collective responsibility was no longer relevant to Germany's place in the world. In summary, German political narratives helped shape the collective memory and perceptions of responsibility of the German people. These narratives mirrored the unspecific views of responsibility for World War II in the Adenauer period, which helped Germany's victim narratives thrive, Brandt's actions represented a shift to acknowledgement, and in Schmidt's era, the narrative shifted once again to a desire to move on from the past. As historian Robert Moeller suggests, we must write a history of the war's end in which some Germans were victims, some were perpetrators, and some were both. However, Michael Geyer and Michael Latham suggest that the German people need a national narrative and memory of World War II that accurately reflects the annihilation that they themselves caused. Gilad Margalit, an Israeli historian, agrees and suggests that though many Germans were legitimate victims, this does not take away from their collective responsibility for the crimes committed during the Holocaust. Political manipulation has played a role in shaping German perceptions of the past and must be considered when examining Germans' collective memory and their responsibility for the Holocaust.